Okay, we have a 10. Interesting integral sent to me by Alex. We have this integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine x over sine cubed x plus cosine cubed x dx. Okay, this one looks kind of similar to one I did not too far back, where it's kind of like almost the King's Principle. The, the easiest situation for us to use King's Principle is when the exponent is the same on everything. So if we had like a 3 there. So it's not going to quite work out as nicely, but let's still go ahead with it. What we want first is... We can kind of label in this formula, we'll say that this here, everything here is going to be our f of x. And what we need to do for our King's Principle formula is add the bounds together. We're like, this will be our a value, this will be our b value. So what we need to find is f of adding them together, pi over 2 minus x. So going ahead with this, what's going to happen? The bounds will stay the same. So we're still going from 0 to pi over 2. Then inputting this everywhere we see an x. We're going to have here in the numerator, this is going to become sine pi over 2 minus x. And then this is going to be, again, sine is just going to be cubed, but the same input. And then we'll have our cosine of pi over 2 minus x. But now for everything here, what we can do is use the complementary angle formula for sine and cosine here, here, and here. So what that's going to do is all the sines are just going to become cosines. And then here where we have cosine, this is going to become sine of x. Of course, we're going to have, of course, it's going to be cubed. So let's see what happens when we transform this whole thing. Then our numerator is just going to become cosine of x. Then it's going to be cosine cubed x plus sine cubed x dx. But this is going to work pretty well because you'll notice we've got the denominator. This denominator is the same thing as our f of x, just in a different order. What I want to do is put some labels on everything. If we label our original integral i, this is also going to be i. And then let's add this copy with this copy. So when we do that, we're going to have two copies, the integral or 2i. And then we'll put these together in one integral. Again, we're going to have this as our denominator. And then just add the numerators. We're going to have just sine x plus cos x. So just factoring this thing, it's going to become kind of a long expression. It's going to become sine x plus cos x. And then here we're going to have sine squared x plus sine cos x plus cosine squared x. And then factoring it this way, what's gonna happen is I can cancel this out with this, just leaving a one in the numerator. And so our integral is just gonna become one over this stuff right here. Let me clean up the board. We can focus on this integral here. Okay, now from here, let's just divide off a two right here, just to isolate our i's. That's gonna be our goal. And I'll just multiply by a one half over here. And then on the right side, I noticed that sine squared x plus cosine squared x, that's just one. But that simplification doesn't really help me that much because for my next step, I think, it's my, I think it might be better to leave it because what I want to do, I think what I want to do to simplify this just with all these sines and cosines is let's multiply in by secant squared x over secant squared x. This is going to help us clean it up and it's also going to give me something in the numerator for a u substitution. So we'll go ahead with this. We have our one half in front. Numerator just becomes secant squared x dx. Then multiplying out the denominator here, secant squared x times sine squared x, that becomes tan squared x. Multiplying secant squared times this, the cosine is going to cancel, and then we're going to have another copy of secant times sine, that's just going to be tan x. And then here at the last one, secant squared x times cosine squared x is just plus 1. And now I'm just realizing there was a mistake in the formula. I'm not sure if I did it wrong when I did the um, sum of cubes, but in the second term you need a minus sign here and here. Now from here, what I notice is we've got tangent in two places and we've got the derivative of tangent right here. So let's do this with the u substitution, just substituting u equal to tan of x, take a derivative, then du is gonna be secant squared x dx. Substituting this, we have our half in front, pi over two, tan at pi over two, that's infinity, take zero, tan at zero is just zero. Our whole numerator is this du value, so we'll just have this all boils down to du, and then the denominator just turns into u squared minus u plus 1. Let's complete the square here, and to do that, we can see this as a 1 coefficient, and then when we do it, we just take 1 half of that. So when I complete the square here, I'm going to do u minus 1 half. Multiply this out, you have u squared minus u plus a fourth. We want to match this 1 fourth, so 1 fourth plus 3 fourths is going to give me back this one. But then let's just set this up to use our arctan formula on this integral. We're almost there. So for instead of 3 fourths, let's just write this as square root of 3 over 2 
squared. Then when you square that, that's gonna be the same thing as 3 fourths. And now here to finish it, we can just use our arctan formula on this. You could do another substitution if you wanted, but it's not gonna matter because the derivative of this is gonna be just du. So we can look at this, just look at this here as our variable. And this here is gonna be like our a squared part. So using the formula on this, we're gonna have the one half out front. Then we have one over a. One over a, just the reciprocal of this is gonna be two over square root of three. So we'll write that in two square root of three. Our variable is gonna be u minus one half. And again, we have our one over a value. So let's write it like this, two over square root of three. And we're evaluating from zero to infinity. But twos are gonna cancel here. I can distribute in this two right here. So before we plug everything in, let's rewrite. So we're gonna have one over square root of three and let's write this as arctan of two u minus one over square root of three. First, evaluating at infinity, what's gonna happen is this whole thing is gonna be just pi over two, because this whole thing is gonna to evaluate to infinity. Then when you plug zero in, it's gonna wipe out the first part, and we're gonna be looking at arctan of one over square root of three, or sorry, negative one over square root of three. This value is gonna happen at minus pi over six. So put this in minus pi over six, minus times minus is plus here. We'll get a common denominator real quick. I'll write this as three over six. Then one over square root of three. Adding these together, we're gonna to have this is gonna become four pi over six. Cancel two there, two there. And so for my final solution to this, we have two pi over three square root of three. Okay, there you have it. Really good problem sent to me by Alex. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.